there was a Qahtani tribe that challenged the authority of Banu Ismail and Banu Jurham and took over. They are known as the Khuda'a tribe. Banu Khuda'a. They took Mecca over. From who? From Banu Ismail and from Banu Jurham. And the Prophet of Allah receives verse number 58 of Surah An Nisa, Surah number 4, verse number 58. Inna Allah ya'murukum an tu addul amanati ila ahliya inside the Kaaba. And the meaning of this verse is more or less that you have to return back the amana from those that you have taken the amana. The Umayyad dynasty, it starts 40 years after migration. 40 years after migration. And it goes up to 132 Hijri. About 90 years. The Umayyad dynasty is 90 years. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. Amma ba'd. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafkahu kawli. Qala Allah ta'ala fil furqan al-hamid. Laqad jaakum rasulun min anfusikum. Azizun alayhi ma'anittum harisun alaykum bil mu'minin ra'ufur rahim. فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَقُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَهُوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ صدق الله العظيم A recap of what we studied uh, last week. <coughs> we made mention that Nabiya Kareem Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said that I have been chosen from the Kinana. So, Kinana has been chosen, sorry, Kinana has been chosen from the family of Ismail. Kinana, this is the name of one of the fathers of Nabi Akrima, is chosen from Ismail. And from Kinana, Allah Almighty chose Quraysh. And from Quraysh, Jazakumullah, Nabi, uh, Nabi Akrima Masa'a says, from Quraysh, Hashim was chosen. And from Hashim, I was chosen. Got it? So from Ismail, Kinana, a person. From Kinana, a person was chosen, and his name is Quraysh, a person. And from Quraysh, Another person has been chosen, his name is Hashim. And from Hashim, Allah Almighty chose Nabi Akareem, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We further made mention that whenever Nabi Akareem wa sallam used to make mention of his family tree, he used to stop at Adnan. And Adnan is the 21st father going upwards. So Adnan, you will see right at the top, I've sent you on your WhatsApp. So you can open the phone. So right at the top is Adnan. Nabi Akrima Masallam said, people that mention my fathers beyond Adnan, they make mistakes. So up to Adnan, it is absolute concrete. So from Prophet Muhammad upwards, 21 fathers are correct, verified, endorsed by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then we made mention that there were basically two types of people in the Arab Peninsula. Those that were originals that were born there, that were raised there, their parents were born there, raised there. They are known as the Qahtani. They are known as the Qahtani. They basically used to live in Yemen or in Bahrain. These were the two places where they used to live, the coastal area. They are known as the original Arabs. Then the second grade Arabs were those that came from other countries, other places. 
They are known as the Adnani, the 21st father of Nabi Akrima Masalam, Adnan, known as the Adnani. Hazrat Ismail alayhi salatu was salam was not Kahtani, he was Adnani. Because Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam migrated from Iraq, from Babylon, from Babul, to Canaan, to Palestine. And then from there migrated to the Arab Peninsula, you can say to Mecca. So Ismail is Adnani. We further made mention that uh, initially there were two tribes that were in control of Mecca. The tribe of Ismail, known as Banu Ismail, and, the, and Banu Ismail is, is Adnani. And Hazrat Ismail married into a Kahtani family, known as Banu Jurham. So his wife was from Jurham. They are the Kahtani, original Arabs. They were in control of Mecca. Banu Ismail was in control of the religious side. And Banu Jurham was in control of running the affairs of the country or the city. Then I made mention that about uh, 440 years before Nabi Akareem Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam came, there was a Kahtani tribe that challenged the authority of Banu Ismail and Banu Jurham and took over. They are known as the Khuda'a tribe. Banu Khuza'a, they took Mecca over from who? From Banu Ismail and from Banu Jurham. You following me? Yeah, right. So they took over and they remained in rule for about 290 years. So Banu Khuza'a took over and they ruled Mecca, the Arab Peninsula, for about 290 years. In this 290 years, Idolatry shirk was introduced by a member from the Khuza'a tribe whose name was Amr bin Luhay. Remember that? Amr bin Luhay was not from Banu Ismail. He was not from Banu Jurham. He was from Banu Khuza'a. And he is the one that introduced idolatry in Mecca. Then came a person who took control from Banu Khuza'a and he was from the Banu Ismail, his name is Qusay. He is the fifth, fifth father of Nabi Akareem Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that is a recap of what we studied last week. Now coming to the family tree, I want you to remember maybe three or four names from the 21 names. The name that is the most important for tonight is Qusay. Qusay is the most important name to remember from the family tree. And Qusay is number five. He's number five upwards. So Prophet Muhammad Wasallam's father is Abdullah. Abdullah's father is Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib's father is Hashim. Hashim's father is Abd Manaf. And Abd Manaf's father is Qusay. Qusay was a strong person. He took leadership from Banu Khuza'a after 290 years. And later on we will study, there is a word I will call it the city hall, Darun Nadwa. He is the one that established Darun Nadwa that we will speak about later on. Now, today is going to be an eye-opener because we're going to dive into a little bit of history i want your undivided attention if you go to sleep or switch off you will miss out so you need to be very very attentive but it is a very important lesson i spent many hours trying to get it right and you can't find this from one book you have to study so many books to get these links right all right so we made mention last week and we can just study the qusay so qusay um, is the son of Kilab. Now, Kilab, Kilab has two sons. One is Qusay and one is Zohra. And most probably we will not have time to discuss Zohra tonight. We're going to discuss Qusay. 
We made mention last week that Qusay has three sons. He has three sons, Qusay, and Qusay is the one that took leadership from Banu Khuza'a, returned it back to Banu Ismail. Qusay has three sons. Number one, Abdul Dar. Number two, Abdul Uzza. Number three, Abde Manaf. I would like you to focus upon Abde Manaf. We're going to try to learn this. Forget about the two other sons. Qusay has a son whose name is Abde Manaf. Let's focus upon that. Because Abde Manaf is a very important person. So Qusay has a son whose name is Abde Manaf. Now Abde Manaf has four sons. As a disclaimer, and we're going to speak about this later on, we need to understand these at least two sons from the four to understand Banu Umayyah and Banu Abbas. It's very, very important. Banu Umayyah and Banu Abbas. You have, you've heard the Umayyah dynasty and the Abbasi dynasty. It will all come from two children. So it's important to understand these four. So Qusay has a son whose name is Abde Manaf. Can you see that? And Abde Manaf has four sons. One son is Hashim. Hashim. Hashim's son is Abdul Muttalib. Do you see that? Abdul Muttalib's son, many sons, we're going to just mention two. One is Abdullah and the second is Abu Talib. Abdullah is the father of Nabi Akrima Masasalam. And Abu Talib is the father of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala. Inshallah, when we finish the family tree, we would understand the 10 Ashra Mubashra, you know, the 10 people, the Ashra Mubashra. They are all from Quraysh. The Ashra Mubashra all are from Quraysh and we will understand their family trees. So first, Ashra Mubashra for tonight is Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala. He comes from where? From Abu Talib. The family tree is known by Hashim. Banu Hashim. That's why the Prophet of Allah said, Hashim has been chosen from Quraysh. Meaning Hashim has been chosen from Qusay. Eh, upwards. And I have been chosen from Hashim. So the family tree of the Prophet of Allah can be called Banu Hashim. All right. So we have understood one Ashra Mubashra, Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala from Abu Talib. Now switch on. This is very important. We're going to the second son. Once again, Qusay, his son is Abde Manaf. Got it? Abde Manaf has one son whose name is Hashim. Hashim is the father of Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib is the father of Abdullah. And Abdullah is the father of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is one. Now, Abde Manaf has another son whose name is Abde Shams. Abde Shams wasn't very popular. He didn't make it. And why didn't he make it? Let's see if you can figure it out. Because his competition was with Hashim. And Hashim was too strong. So he couldn't become popular. He was popular in his family, but not in the Arab Peninsula. So, Abd Shams could not become popular because his competition was with Hashim. And Hashim was too strong. So, the strength of Hashim did not allow Abd Shams to rise. Got it? Do you see that? All right. Now, Abd Shams has a son whose name is. Umayyah. Now, Umayyah is in competition with Abdul Muttalib. Do you see that? Umayyah is in competition with Abdul Muttalib. You will say that Abdul Muttalib was very strong, but he had no children for a very, very long time. We will learn this afterwards. By the time he was blessed with children, Umayyah had many children. So he became very popular. Abdul Muttalib had children later on. He had, he had children later on. Umayyah had children very early. 
And in the Arab culture, if you had children, you were very strong. So Umayyah became very, very famous, very, very powerful. All right, now, look at the chart. Umayyah has two sons. One is Harab, and the second is Abul As. Right. Umayyah has two sons. Look at the chart, not me. Umayyah has two sons. One is Harab, one is Abul As. You got that? All right. Go back one step and look at Umayyah. I've come up with something. So a, a, a person sent me a question last week and he wanted to know where does Utba come from? The one that was leading the battle of Badr. Utba, Rabi'ah, Shayba. You know Utba bin Rabia, Shayba, Walid bin Utba, the three people that came out to fight. Remember I told you last week, three people came out to fight. Now look at Umayya. Umayya had another brother. It's not here. Umayya had a brother whose name was Rabia. Umayya had a brother whose name was Rabia. Rabia had two children, Utba and Shayba. And Utba had three children. This is where you will understand why Hinda wanted to kill Hazrat Hamza. You will understand now. Let's start again. Umayyah has a brother whose name is Rabia. Rabia has two children, Utba and Shayba, brothers. Both of them challenged in the Battle of Badr and both of them died. Utba and Shayba. Utba was killed by Hazrat Hamza. And Shayba, he was removed by Ubaidah, that we will speak about, or we spoke about last week. Now, Utba has three children. Listen to the names. Abu Huzaifa, the very famous Sahabi. Abu Jal said to Utba in the Battle of Badr, you're not coming because your child has become a Muslim. Which child was he referring to? Abu Huzaifa, number one child. Number two, Walid who was killed in the battle of Badr by Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala and the third was a sister, Hinda. Hinda. Hinda is the one that secured the service of Wahshi to remove Hazrat Hamza and then later on she, you know, she ripped him apart. So this Hinda, Hinda, who later on became a Muslim, she is the daughter of uh, Utba. And Utba is the son of Rabia, and Rabia is the brother of Muawiyah. Now, this was a warrior family. Now, is it okay? Following a little bit? All right. We're going to start again. It's no problem. We want to learn this. We don't want to run through this. We got, we got many years, inshallah. So, there's going to be many lessons that are going to be easy stories, and there's going to be lessons that are very, very, you know, demanding. So where the lesson is demanding, we will go, take it slowly. All right. Now, again, Abd Manaf, Abd Manaf, he is the son of Qusay. Abd Manaf has one son whose name is Hashim. Now we know the family of tree of Hashim. Hashim, Abdul Muttalib, Abdullah, Muhammad. Done. And then from this, we get Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala as well because Abdullah's brother, Abu Talib, is the father of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala. Got that? All right. The second son, Abdul Shams. Very interesting lineage. Very interesting family tree. I will tell you now, Abdul Shams, this family tree is known as the Umayyad dynasty that we'll speak about in a few moments. Now, Abdul Shams, he didn't become popular. His son, Umayyah became popular. Now, Umayyah became popular. I told you the reason why. Umayyah has a brother, and that brother's name is Rabi'ah. Rabi'ah. Rabi'ah has two sons, Utba and Shayba. And Utba has three children. One is Abu Huzaifa, who became a Muslim early. One is Walid, who died in the Battle of Badr. And third is Hinda. The lady that chewed the internal organs of Hazrat Hamza later on became a Muslimah. Got that? All right. Let's go down. Umayyah has a son whose name is Harab. Harab. You look at that. Umayyah has 
Uh, Umayyah has a son whose name is Harab. Harab has a son whose name is Sakhar. Sakhar is the name of Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan, you all know Abu Sufyan. So Abu Sufyan's name was Sakhar. Saad Khara. And he's known as Abu Sufyan. Now Abu Sufyan's son is Muawiyah. His son's name is Muawiyah. Does anyone know Muawiyah? He was the governor of Damascus for over 20 years. Now, give me a weak nod or a strong nod if you have understood up to here. Huh? All right, got it. All right. Now, because the next part, we up, shut that out. You know, close it now. Now we're going to enter the Umayyad dynasty to understand the Umayyad dynasty. Very, very important. This is our history. Muawiyah. Now Muawiyah has, uh, sorry, Umayyah has Harab. Harab. Harab has a son whose name is Sakhar, who's known as Abu Sufyan. And Abu Sufyan has a son whose name is Muawiyah. Muawiyah has a son whose name is Yazid. Have you heard that name Yazid? Yazid was responsible for the murder of the grandchild of Nabi Akrim Muhammad Sallallahu known as Adal Hussein in the Karbala. All right, now. Abdul Shamsan Umayyah, Umayyah dynasty. How does it start? It starts from here. It goes down. On the left side, it goes to Harab, it goes to Abu Sufyan, it goes to Muawiyah, then it goes to Yazid, then it goes to Muawiyah, and then it keeps going on. The Umayyad dynasty, it starts 40 years after migration. 40 years after migration. And it goes up to 132 Hijri, about 90 years. The Umayyad dynasty is 90 years. Prophet Muhammad said, after I leave Khalafat, and Khalafat is selection of a leader by Mashwara. Kingship is that basically you hand over control to your child. We call it Malukiyat. Khalafat and Malukiyat. So Prophet Muhammad said, Khalafat will be 30 years. Khalafat will be 30 years. The calendar starts when the Prophet of Allah migrated. So when he passed away, there were 10 years already. Because he passed away 10 years after migration. So that's 10 years done. Got it? Now 30 years of Khilafat, where there are five Khulafa. Normally we say four, but it is five. Two years, Abu Bakr. Round numbers. Two years, Abu Bakr. 10 years Umar, 12 years Uthman, 6 years Hassan and Ali collectively. That makes 30 years. Then the Prophet of Allah said, after 30 years, Khilafat will be replaced by Malukiyat, kingship. Khilafat will be changed by Malukiyat. There will be no Khilafat after that. So once again, Abu Bakr how many years? 2 years. Umar, 10 years, round figures, round numbers. Usman, 12 years, that's 24. And Hazrat Hassan and Ali, Hazrat Hassan about six months, Hazrat Ali about five and a half years, is six years. That's 30 years done. How many in total? That's 40. 10 years of the Prophet after migration, and 30 years, 40. Now from here, Maluki yet starts. Amir Muawiyah, who was the governor of Sham, and he was a governor three years in the tenure of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala. Now keep in mind, Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala had a principle. The principle was that no person will remain in control more than four years. No person. Before four years, he used to remove them. Hazrat Umar was a genius, so no one becomes too powerful. No one becomes powerful. 
Three years into his rule in Damascus, Umar was assassinated. Three years. So he was a governor of Damascus for three years in the time of Umar. Now Umar dies. The person that takes over is Usman, and you will know in a few moments that they're cousins. Usman had different principles, radiallahu ta'ala. He did not remove Amir Mu'awiyah. So that's 12 years now. 12 years and 3 years, 15 years he was the governor of Damascus. Became very, very powerful. Amir Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala. 15 years. And then in the time of Hazrat Ali, there were many fights. Hazrat Hassan, after seeing the death of his father, he realized that the Ummat cannot move on. So he withdrew Khilafat and he swore allegiance on the hands of Amir Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala. So now Amir Mu'awiyah has another 20 years. So that's literally 40 years, the governor of Damascus. That's why he was so powerful. And that's where the Umayyad dynasty started. The Umayyad dynasty started from 40 Hijri to 132 Hijri. And there were 14 rulers in this time. 14, 1, 4. So I'm giving you a condensed understanding of the history of our beautiful religion. Got it? How many rulers? 14 in the Umayyad dynasty. The most popular, excluding Amir Mu'awiyah, was Umar bin Abdul Aziz. Umar bin Abdul Aziz was very, very famous. He came in 99 Hijri and he passed away in 101. So he's from the Umayyad dynasty, very, very popular, very, very pious. All right. After 132 Hijri, Banu Hashim took over. And I'll call them Banu Abbas. Banu Abbas from the Hashim family, they took over. They took over control from Banu Umayyah, from their cousins. And they ruled for the next, poof, they ruled for the next 524 years. Banu Umayyah only ruled for 90 years. Banu Abbas from the family of Hashim, they ruled from 132 Hijri to 656 Hijri. About 524 years, meaning that the Muslim Ummah was led by Quraysh for 500, about 600 years. Our history is only about 1400 years, yeah? So out of 1400 years, 600, 650 years, 650 years has been led by Quraysh. May it be the son known as Hashim or the son known as Umayyah. You got it? All right. Let's look at the calendar again, uh, the, 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 the map. Umayyah. All right. Umayyah, you see Harab, you see Abu Sufyan, now you say Muawiyah. All right. Umayyah has another son on the other side, Abu al-As. Now all the 14 rulers were not from this family tree. They were not from this family tree. They will come from this family tree, Abu al-As. Abu al-As has a son, his name is Affan. You see that? Affan. Affan is the father of Usman, Usman bin Affan. Usman bin Affan is the third caliph of Islam. I just made mention when Umar passed away, the next caliph was Usman bin Affan. He did not remove Muawiyah. Look at that. Usman and Muawiyah, cousins. He didn't remove him. You got that? Didn't remove him. That's why Muawiyah became, radiallahu ta'ala, became very, very powerful. But I would like you now to really switch on. Look at Affan. Affan has a brother, his name is Hakam. It's not there. Affan has a brother whose name is Hakam. Hakam has a son whose name is Marwan. And Marwan has three sons. Listen to the names. Abdul Malik, Abdul Aziz, and Muhammad. Abdul Aziz, Umar bin Abdul Aziz, the father of Umar bin Abdul Aziz. And Abdul Malik is the one of the rulers, Marwan bin Hakam, Abdul Malik bin Marwan. It comes from this line. That's the Umayyad dynasty in total. 
So some of the, you know, out of the 14 rulers, some come from the Harab family tree. And many of them come from, from the Abu al-As family tree. But it comes down to Affan and then his brother Hakam and Hakam's brother Marwan and Marwan's three sons, Abdul Malik, Abdul Aziz and Muhammad. Got it? All right. All right. <clears throat> so this is the Umayyad and the Abbasi dynasty. So it comes from these two. And they're both the sons of Abd Manaf. Now let's go. Um, last week I uh, made mention of Muttalib as well. And this is Abd Manaf's third son, Muttalib. Then we spoke about Nofal. Just uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a flavor, it's not there. Nofal is the... Nofal has a son whose name is Adi. You will, you will, you will recognize this name. Nofal has a son whose name is Adi. And Adi has a son whose name is Mat'im. And Mat'im has a son whose name is Jubair. Jubair bin Mat'am. Very, very famous Sahabi that we will learn about, inshallah, when we study the history. All right. Now, let's go across. Abdi Manaf, Qusay has three sons. We've only spoken about one son, Abdi Manaf. Now we're going to across to the other son of Qusay whose name is Abdul Uzza. Very interesting this one, Abdul Uzza. So this is Qusay's other son. One son is Abdul Manaf, done. Now we're going to Qusay's second son. His name is Abdul Uzza. Abdul Uzza has a son whose name is Asad. Asad has a son whose name is Khuwailid. Khuwailad has a son whose name is Awam with the Ain, Awam. And Awam has a son whose name is Zubair. Now, Zubair bin Awam is Ashra Mubashara. But this line is very rich. Oof. You have to spend some time on this line. Very rich line. All right. Zubair bin Awam, Ashra Mubashara. Now, Khuwailad, where have you heard that name before? Khatija binte Khuwailad. Khatija, the wife of Nabi Akri Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi the first wife, first wife, Khatija radiallahu ta'ala anha, she was the daughter of Khuwailid. Khuwailid. Now, look at the mixing of families. It's amazing. That's why the Prophet of Allah, the deen speaks about family ties. Because they were intertwined. You will understand in a few moments. Khuwailad, the person, the, fa the man, is the father of Hazza Khatija. Khatija binti Khuwailad. Now, if you go down, Awam is the son of Khuwailad. That means Awam is the brother of Khatija. Try to understand that. Very, very interesting. Awam is the son of Khuwailad. Khatija is the daughter of Khuwailad. That makes Awam and Khatija Tul Kubra brother and sister. Now, who is Awam married to? Awam was married to that warrior lady. The paternal auntie of Nabi Akrim Muhammad has a Safiya. She's the auntie that accepted Islam, has a Safiya. And she's the first lady to take the life of a mushrik in defense. She was a giant of a lady, has a Safiya radiallahu ta'ala, the puppy. The paternal auntie of Nabi Akrim Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She is married to Hazrat Awam. Meaning, she is married to the brother of Khatija Tul Kubra. She's the auntie of Nabi Akrim Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You get it? Hazrat Safiya. All right. Now, Hazrat Safiya, the auntie of the Prophet of Allah, and Awam are married. They have a child whose name is Zubair. Zubair bin Awam, who is Ashra Mubashra. Zubair bin Awam is married to Hazrat Aisha's elder sister, Hazrat Asma. Hazrat Asma, the elder sister of Hazrat Aisha, is married to Zubair. Zubair and Aish, Aisha's elder sister, Asma, husband and wife. Got it? And from these two, a child is born whose name is Abdullah bin Zubair. And Abdullah bin Zubair is the first male child to survive 
in Madinatul Munawwara. The story behind that is that when the Muslims migrated to Madinatul Munawwara, the Jews, they thought they had done witchcraft and cast a spell upon the Muslims that no male will survive. And what happened is a few baby boys died on birth. So they were jumping up and down. The first child to survive was the child of Zubair bin Awam and Hazrat Asma, known as Abdullah bin Zubair. So he's the first child to survive and after that, many, many children survived, of course. So the Prophet of Allah, the Sahaba, used to pick Abdullah bin Zubair and take him into the streets and say, look, the spell has not worked. You got it? So this line is very, very rich. All right. Qusay's third son, Abdul Dar. Now, remember, when you read the books of Sira, when you want to identify this family, Abdul Uzza, Asad, Khuwailad, Awam, and Zubair bin Awam, sometimes they say Banu Asad because the second person became famous and not the first. And sometimes they call it Banu Asad bin Abdul Uzza. So sometimes in the books you'll find Banu Asad. They are referring to this lineage. And sometimes they will make mention of father and son, Banu Asad bin Abdul Uzza. Now, Qusay's third son, Abdul Dar, very, very important. Have you heard the family name Banu Abdul Dar? Banu means children. Banu Abdul Dar. This family is very, very important. The Prophet of Allah has said something about this family that you will learn in a few moments. Abdul Dar has a son whose name is Usman. Usman has a son whose name is Abdul Uzza. Abdul, Abdul Uzza has a son whose name is Abdullah. And Abdullah has a son whose name is Usman. And Usman has a son who is Talha. Talha bin Usman. These are the guardians of the key of the Kaaba. Banu Abdul Dar. The very famous story when Prophet Muhammad was leaving Mecca. He came to Talha bin Usman. He came to this person, Talha bin Usman. And he said, can you open the door of the Kaaba so I can pray inside? He declined. He did not give the key to the Prophet. He did not open the door. Prophet Muhammad said, a day will come when you will hand me the keys. Cutting the story short, after many, many years, not many years, eight years, Nabi Akrim Muhammad returns. Talha bin Usman is summoned. Keys are given to the Prophet of Allah. The doors are opened. And then the Prophet of Allah receives verse number 58 of Surah An Nisa, Surah number 4, verse number 58. In Allah ya'murukum an tu addul amanati ila ahliha inside the Kaaba. And the meaning of this verse is more or less that you have to return back the amana from those that you have taken the amana. It's amazing. Because outside Hazrat Ali was waiting. Outside Hazrat Abbas was waiting, Banu Hashim was waiting, that we will be given the key. So the Nabi of Allah returned, he came out, he had the key in his hand, he called Talha bin Usman, he reminded him of that day when Talha bin Usman declined giving the key and the Prophet of Allah said, I will not do that. And then the Prophet of Allah made a dua, he said, this key will re remain in your family, Banu Abdul Dar. This key will remain in Banu Abdul Dar till the day of judgment. And the only person that will take this key from this family will be a valim, a wrongdoer. That's why till today the statement of the Nabi of Allah has protected the key and no one has taken it because no one wants the title valim. Because if they take the key from this family, according to the statement of the Prophet of Allah, they become valim. All right, soak it in one minute. We'll return back in a minute. All right, look at that. We haven't finished. I'm just going to do a recap. Keep in mind when you go home, this is not a lecture. You'll forget it all. You need to look at the map. You need to play what I have said. And you have to reconcile with the map. And then inshallah, you do this a few times and you become a hafiz. I'm benefiting the most. All right. Now, a recap of what we studied today. We did a recap of what we studied last week in the start. We're not doing a recap of that. 
a recap of what we've studied today. We made mention that uh, Qusay has a son whose name is Abd Manaf. Abd Manaf has four sons. We focused upon the first known as Hashim, who is the father of Abdul Muttalib, who is the father of Abdullah, who is the father of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is known as Banu Hashim, the children of Hashim. Abdullah has many brothers. One of them is Abu Talib. And Abu Talib is the father of Ali. And this is the first Ashara Mubashara. One of the first people, you know, that received glad tidings from the Prophet of Allah. This is Quraysh. Then we made mention that if we go across, Hashim has another brother whose name is Abdu Shams. This line is the line of warriors and fighters. So Abdu Shams has a son whose name is Umayyah. And this is known as the Umayyah dynasty. Umayyah has a brother that is not on the map. So you have to remember this. His name is Rabi'ah. I didn't want to confuse it too much, but just for your information. Umayyah has a brother whose name is Rabi'ah. Rabia has two sons, Utbah and Shayba. Then Utbah has three children, Abu Huzaifa, Walid, and Hinda. Got that? All right. Then we made mention that Umayyah has a son whose name is Harab. Harab's son's name is Sakhar, known as Abu Sufyan. And Abu Sufyan has a son whose name is Muawiyah. And Muawiyah... Didn't make mention, but just mention it now. Just came to my mind. Uma, uh, Muawiyah has a sister whose name is Ramla. Famous by the name Ummi Habiba, who is the wife of Nabi Akrim Muhammad Sallallahu So Muawiyah is the brother-in-law of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So Muawiyah has a sister whose name is Ramla, binti Abi Sufyan, known as Ummi Habiba. So Muawiyah becomes the brother-in-law of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Keep that in mind as well. All right. Umayyah has another son on the right side, Abu Al-As. Abu Al-As has a son whose name is Affan. Affan has a son whose name is Usman. And Usman is the second Ashra Mubashra, Usman bin Affan, the third Khalif of Islam. If we go one step back, Affan has a brother whose name is Hakam. Hakam has a, brother, um, a son whose name is Marwan. And then from here starts the lineage. Umar bin Abdul Aziz, his father, and all of them come. I made mention that the uh, Umayyad dynasty starts from 40 Hijri to 132. 14, 14 Umayyad kings. Um, it's about 90 years more or less. Famous ones are Amir Muawiyah, radiyallahu ta'ala an, and Umar bin Abdul Aziz, rahmatullah alayhi. The son of Amir Muawiyah, Yazid, he is responsible for the martyrdom of Hazrat Hussein and the family Ahl Bayt of Nabi Akareem Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All right. Then we went uh, across. Qusay has Abdul Uzza. This is his second son. One is Abdul Manaf. Second son is Abdul Uzza. Abdul Uzza has Asad. That's his son. Asad's son's name is Khuwaylad. Khuwaylad's son's name is Awam. Awam's son's name is Zubair. And Zubair bin Awam is the third Ashara Mubashara. So we have covered Hazrat Ali, number two Hazrat Usman, and number three Zubair bin Awam. We made mention that if you go up, Khuwaylad is the father of Hazrat Khatija al Kubra. So that means Awam and Khatija are brothers and sisters. Awam is a man, of course, married to the auntie of Nabi Akrim Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hazrat Safiya. So Hazrat Safiya the auntie, the paternal auntie of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Awam, a husband and wife. They are blessed with a child whose name is Zubayr bin Awam, who is Ashra Mubashara. And Zubayr bin Awam is married to the eldest sister of Hazrat Aisha, known as Asma bint Abi Bakr. And from this wedlock, Asma bint Abi Bakr and Zubayr bin Awam, a child is born whose name is Abdullah bin Zubayr. And he is one of the great Sahabis, killed by uh, Hajjaj bin Yusuf. And that is history in itself. We'll speak about it another day. All right. Qusay's third son, Abduddar. This family is known as Banu Abduddar. These are the people, the family that will hold on to the key till the day of judgment. Abduddar's son's name is Usman. Usman's son's name is Abdul Uzza. Abdul Uzza's son's name is Abdullah. Abdullah's son's name is Usman. And Usman's son's name is Talha. Talha bin Usman, Talha, the son of Usman, 
is the person that the Prophet of Allah before leaving Makkah al Mukarramah approached to open the, the, the Kaaba. Later on, of course, he became a Muslim. So Alhamdulillah, in two lessons, we have covered the sons of Abd Manaf. That's what we have done. And we have covered, uh, you can say, um, three Ashra Mubashras. We've got seven left. We've got seven left. So we have covered three. Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala, Hazrat Usman and Zubair. And we have understood the Umayyad dynasty from 90 Hijri to 130, uh, 32, and then from 132 to 656, about 524 years, is the Banu Abbas dynasty. So about 650 years, the Quraysh led, the Quraysh led the Muslim world. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه الغفور الرحيم